Hi, I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. I'm here today with Debbie Gordon, founder and CEO at CloudRange, a virtual cyber range training platform. To learn more about CloudRange, visit cloudrangecyber.com. Debbie, welcome. Great to have you with us today. Thank you, Steve. Nice to be here with you. So, Debbie, you're in a hot market. The market's growing despite the COVID pandemic. If anything, we've seen more activity. And with any hot market, uh, it changes. Uh, You've been a trendsetter in the industry. A lot of companies are watching you. So we wanted you to come on today and, you know, talk to us about the cyber range market. Uh, What is it looking like? Uh, Some new players have pushed in, but you're the market leader. So uh, two minutes maybe, uh, you know, to frame the discussion. What does the market look like? So, yeah, when we started this uh, about three years ago, a lot of people didn't even know what a cyber range was. And the generic form of a cyber range is really just any test environment. Um, it used to be something where, where companies or militaries, for example, may organize a bunch of uh, machines on a network and test things. But it has come so far and it is evolving such that Um, There's a lot of opportunities now for customers to not have to manage infrastructure, not have to manage and build content, um, and really utilize a lot of different forms of simulation via a cyber range to meet their training goals and their testing goals. So it uh, it has evolved. In fact, um, just over the last couple of years, we've seen such an increase in customers coming to us saying, we know what this is. And we would like to understand it more. But whereas a few years ago, we were out there telling people what it was. So um, it has changed drastically. I, you know, we got here, we got into this at the right time. Um, and we're, we're helping a lot of companies really improve their security posture using simulation. So Debbie, let's cover four topics to help CISOs and security leaders evaluate cyber ranges. And if you want to add anything, please do that. But we'd like to go over uh, lab exercises events, tabletop exercises, and assessments. Uh, That's consistently what we're hearing. Um, Talk to us about lab exercises to start. What's important and what's on the market now? Yeah, so as you're thinking about simulation, um, simulation has to reflect how people are doing business. And it's the three-legged stool. It's people, process, and technology. And so um, when we look at people, lab exercises reflect potentially something that one person is doing in a static environment. Um, That's not enough. Lab exercises are wonderful. It's a great way for um, individuals to hone some segregated skills. Um, And especially with the cyber skill shortage, which I I know you're obviously very familiar with, um, we have to give people the opportunity to practice on various knowledge, skills, and abilities Um, on their own time, when it's flexible. So that's what really where lab exercises focus. But a lot of lab exercises are small, static exercises that may just reflect a small portion of what happens in a cyber attack. So um, it's a great element of a layered approach to incorporating simulation into your organization. So let's talk about cyber range events. Very interesting, uh, something I find very interesting, but I'm not sure that everybody knows exactly what they are. So maybe you can explain and then talk to CISOs about what they should be looking for, what types of vendor offerings are available. Yeah, so a cyber range event is something that has, it's not new. A lot of people think about that in the form of a tabletop exercise. Um, Tabletop exercises have traditionally been done with decision makers, um, C-suites, the incident response teams, and usually in a tabletop exercise or in a a cyber range type of event, a situation has already happened. Something bad has already happened, and maybe the FBI comes in and says, hey, we found your customer's information on the dark web. What do you do? And then you have to figure out what your response plan is. Um, those Those are really... Events is the great word for it because it's a one-time thing, and there's a lot of learning that can come from it. But as we know, cybersecurity changes every single day, and the things we have to learn change every single day. And so 
having an event implies a one-time thing, even if it's just once a year. So we have to have a program where we're incorporating not just the, the executives and the, the decision makers and, and um, non-technical people, but we have to look at it really as a prequel to all that is what happens in the SOC. What, what happens when there's an alert? What happens before a threat is even detected to make sure that we're exploring the entire kill chain in, in simulation? So Debbie, finally, let's go over assessments. This is really important and often overlooked. What's the biggest benefit of assessments and what are you seeing in the market now? So there's two types of assessments. Um, and let, let me just clarify what assessments mean versus training. So training is something that people can do to learn something new, learn new skills and capabilities. Assessments are done to test somebody's existing skills and determine what they know, what they can do, and also what they need to know and what they need to be able to do. So assessments uh, for our customers are done two ways. One is that they are done um, with existing security teams, so establishing a baseline. So if you're a CISO and you are, you know, you've either inherited um, a SOC, an IR team, or you're building one, or you're just not quite sure how well they can perform, we can conduct an assessment using various scenarios to create a baseline of an understanding of what they're capable of um, and really a, a plan for moving forward to ensure that you feel safe, that your team is ready to respond to something. Now, the next type of assessment is for candidates. So um, as security teams are growing, companies are hiring new candidates or they may be bringing people in from another part of the organization. And even if somebody meets the requirements of, you know, you need to have these certifications, you need to have X number of years of experience in a specific type of job, that doesn't actually tell the whole story. Um, so we need to use simulation to be able to assess somebody's actual capabilities. And the way to think about this is similar to uh, football, for example. So a coach is not gonna bring um, or recruit somebody to join an NFL team simply on their stats. They have to watch game film. They have to know if this person can actually perform. They may have the knowledge, they may have the skills, um, but can they actually play in the game? Um, so this is so doing a simulation-based assessment is something that allows employers and hiring managers to ensure that they're making good hires um, and that the people are going to be able to perform. And this obviously helps reduce attrition and um, and the uh, the churn in in cybersecurity jobs. So Debbie. I appreciate you. You know, you're a thought leader. You always come on. You talk about the market. You don't pitch your company, but I'm going to push you here because, uh, as you know, I first learned about you from a group of CISOs at the RSA conference, and they were blown away by you. And that was a presentation uh, not only on the market, but on your company, on CloudRange. So you have to talk mm -hmm. to us about CloudRange. Tell us what you're doing. How is the company differentiated in the market? You know, that, that's the million-dollar question. Yeah, so I appreciate that. Um, and, you know, we do spend a lot of our time just educating the market because this is a new category that we have developed and it's getting a lot of attention. So where we are, we, we focus in a few areas. So number one, um, in enterprise customers globally, we're working with their security teams. So pr primarily the SOC and the IR teams for ongoing and perpetual simulation training. And this is not a live training on your own network. This is on our cyber range. Um, where we're creating scenarios for your teams to train on to practice detection, response, and remediation of cyber attacks. Um, and we measure it all. So these aren't just exercises that are fun. Uh, they, you know, people obviously enjoy them because they're learning, but we're able to show progress over the course of a year, for example, that shows how the team is doing in detection and response time and how the individuals that make up the team are doing. So that's one area. That's that's our bread and butter, I would say, with with most of our our, uh, our enterprise customers. So um, that's called Flex Range. And then we have a program called Fast Track, which is the candidate assessments. And they can be used for transfer assessments also, but um, enabling uh, employers and cyber hiring managers to be able to assess the candidates that are coming that are coming in. Another thing that we have been really focused on, which has been um, a I wouldn't say a surprise, but very enlightening is that the, you know, we talk about the weakest link in the chain being the 
the people who are doing detection and response. Um, but there's actually one piece beyond that, and that is their ability to communicate and collaborate and have confidence that what they're doing is correct. Um, we have watched teams in the most advanced uh, advanced companies, um, very advanced people who they may have the skills and the capabilities, but if they're not communicating and collaborating and they don't have the confidence to take action, it can significantly uh, decrease response time. And obviously, as CISOs know, that has a direct impact on, um, on risk and revenue. So that's a big part of what we're focusing on now, and our customers are seeing a lot of that too. And it strikes me that uh, an investment into cyber ranges in general and cloud range in particular is really one of the best ROIs. I mean, you know, we're not talking about a seven figure spend, right? I mean, g give us right. just a general idea, uh, you know, in the context of other investments that CISOs and security teams are making, mm -hmm. you know, what, what is a, a, a cyber range investment look like? So there's various kinds of, uh, of, engagements. So um, if you are talking about a cloud-based engagement where a co company doesn't have to manage any infrastructure, we still are able to customize the environment. And one of the things that I haven't mentioned yet is that back to people, process, and technology, those three things have to be mimicked in simulation. And so when we talk about mimicking technology, um, incorporating the tools that you're using in your environment so that your people are practicing on those tools, but in a safe place um, is integral. So, um, you know, we're working with most of the uh, most of the technologies that you probably have in your environment. Um, and so having an environment where we're customizing it, but it's still something that you don't have to manage usually will be anywhere from about you know, $120,000 to $150,000 a year for an average size security team. Um, and that can vary. It's, it's based on frequency. It's like going to the gym. The more, uh, the more things you do, the better equipped you're going to be, the better in shape you're going to be. Um, and then the, the candidate assessments are done per candidate. And so you're obviously going to be interviewing multiple people for roles. So that's a different product that we have. Right. Well, there's nothing more important than people right now. As you pointed out earlier, uh, we're grappling with a shortage of qualified labor uh, in the cybersecurity space. A lot of companies uh, and a lot of people in general in our industry talk about recruiting. I'm more focused on retaining people. And it strikes me that um, the cybersecurity professionals themselves will appreciate the opportunity to be engaged in a cyber range, have that opportunity. Is that part of a, a retainment strategy as well? It is. Uh, that was kind of an unexpected uh, positive result of what we're doing. We survey the trainees after every simulation, and we have found that 99% of them say that they like their job better as a result of doing this. And when somebody likes their job better, it usually means it's because they can do their job better. Um, it means that their confidence is improved. And for CISOs out there who have the responsibility of ensuring that their companies are protected, you can rest assured that the people are actually doing better um, to protect your companies and your customers' information. Now, is that part of that, Debbie, that you know the cyber fighters are going to see action, maybe action that they're not going to see otherwise, um, you know, kind of like going into a dojo, practicing martial arts, uh, you know, you might not necessarily get into a street fight, but you're going to be able to use your skills. Yeah. So it's very important that people experience not just what their specific job is, but what is happening throughout the entire cyber attack. They have a much better concept of it. So um, one of the philosophies that we practice in our uh, in our simulation training is that uh, people should have access to a lot more than they would do on a day-to-day -day basis. So for example, if somebody's a tier one SOC analyst um, in their job, they may actually have access to the firewalls in the simulation because then they can communicate better with the firewall team when something has to happen. And so it gives them a much better context of the entire environment. And what this also does is it gives your employees the ability to see potential in other jobs that they may, might, may want to move into. You don't want people to get so complacent in their job that they leave. And so having them uh, having their eyes open to other areas of cybersecurity within your company is really important too. So Debbie, you've really helped bring the industry along. You've helped people understand the market. Where is it going? 
Um, you know, where do you see the cyber range market in a year from now, three years, five years out, if we could even look that far ahead? Yeah. So Gartner estimated a few years ago, they, they estimated that 15% of companies will be using cyber ranges by 2022. And that is really close to now. And we are seeing it. So it's becoming very prevalent. It's increasing fast. Um, security leaders are allocating budget for it. And um, it, you know, it's something that is not a nice to have anymore. And the reason this is happening now versus five years ago is that you know, the technology simply didn't exist. So now we're able to, to provide this technology, provide the services around it to make it useful for customers, um, which is enabling companies to have something that is affordable, that's flexible, that's customizable, and that they can really grow with as they, as they adapt and change. You know, their cybersecurity organizations are always changing, so this will adapt with them. So do you think this is going to be similar to the security awareness training market? Uh, you know, a decade ago, companies really weren't training their employees slowly, but surely, you know, that started to happen. Now, practically every large enterprise has a security awareness training program. Do you think, you know, five years out or, you know, for, I don't know, is it going to take a decade, but are we going to be in a place where every company has a cyber range? I believe we are. Um, we are in the process of establishing simulation as a standard in cybersecurity. If you think about other life safety areas, for example, um, military, fire, um, medicine, there are so many that are protecting people's lives and simulation is a standard. But in cybersecurity, it's, we are not there yet. And so that is something that is happening very quickly. And now that um, we've provided the technology to be able to do that. Companies are saying, seeing that is so viable um, and not a huge undertaking to do and be able to feel confident that they're being as proactive as they can. Um, back to your point about security awareness, um, one thing that I found interesting is that if you look at a lot of security awareness marketing, they talk about the, um, the users the employees just being the last line of defense because those are the people who are who will click on the phishing email. But if you think about it, the people in the SOC are actually the last line of defense. Those are the people who, assuming somebody clicks on that bad email, those are the people who have to detect and respond to everything. And it is integral that those people are prepared for really any situation and have created the muscle memory to be able to defend against the uh, against the attackers. Well, Debbie, really appreciate you uh, coming on today. Cloud Range is continuing to innovate, win awards. There's a reason why. And uh, I think the audience had a chance to see that today. So thank you. I hope you'll be back soon. Thank you so much, Steve. Really appreciate everything you do. And Cyber Cybercrime Magazine and Cybersecurity Ventures, we thank you. I'm Steve Morgan, founder of Cybersecurity Ventures and editor-in-chief at Cybercrime Magazine. Joining us today was Debbie Gordon, founder and CEO at CloudRange, a virtual cyber range training platform. To learn more about CloudRange, visit cloudrangecyber.com. You can follow all of our media at cybercrimemagazine.com.